بسم الله بسم الله بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I wanted to start with um, we'll, the khutbah today will be on salat we read often from the book of Hakim al-Ummat Hadrat Maulana Muhammad Ashraf Ali Thani rahmatullahi and I wanted to just start with reading a small uh, part of this uh, khutbah, a translation of it, so you know what we are talking about. And then maybe share a few reflections on this important topic of Salat. So this khutbah starts and we will be reading in Arabic when we stand up for the formal khutbah. But it starts like this. All praises be to Allah, who showers his servants with his bounties and who causes the enlightenment of his deen and its obligations to settle in their hearts. And all glory be to him. How great is his authority and powerful is his sovereignty. How perfect his grace and how all encompassing his bounties and favours. We bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah alone, without partner or associate. And we bear witness that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and messenger. May the choicest blessings of Allah descend upon him and his offspring and his companions who are the key men towards guidance and the shining lamps in the depths of darkness. O Muslims, verily the Salah is the very foundation of Deen. It is a stronghold of faith and the most important acts of worship whereby to draw nearer to Allah and is also the best among the acts of obedience towards Allah. So what is this Thing that we call prayer or more accurately salah. What does salah even mean? We often think of prayer but the word itself comes from silla which means to be bonded to, to be connected. And this my friends is the gift that Allah has given us. This gift was given to all the prophets. Musa salam, when he went to the valley and he saw the burning bush, the fire, and he actually communicated with Allah. What did, he, what did he get from Allah? What did Allah command him to do? Salat. When the Prophet ﷺ went through the mirage, went through the heavens, went even beyond the point where Jibreel ﷺ could even go further. They say he was two bow lengths in proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the gift that Allah bestowed upon him? Salat. This is a gift. It's a gift given to each and every one of us. Actually, it is a gift given to all of mankind. If you look in the Quran, there is no activity that is commanded for us to do more than Salat. Mm. But it's not only commanded to Muslims. It's even when referring to the, the, the Bani Israel, it's commanded to do prayer because the Salat is something, yes, we have our formal Salat, but it is a way for you to reach Allah, to pray to Allah, to connect with Allah. They say, there's a famous saying in English, they say there are no atheists in the trench. You know, in World War I, there was trench warfare. Death was, every day you were scared you might die. And in that moment, you'll ask, many people have, have mentioned this before, that in a moment when death is so close, in a moment of crisis, you reach out for Allah. Mm. It's in our design. We are made that way. And Allah is commanding not only us, but everybody. You, sincerely, you reach out to me and I will listen. So this is something that is in our design as human beings, to connect to Allah. We are blessed as the Ummah of Prophet Wasallam to have been given this in its most pristine and perfect form in the prayer where even the very body movements are in alignment with our human design. 
So this is a way for us to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of it as this. Think of it as these five times a day that we are given this wonderful opportunity. I know it's difficult, especially in the winter with Zohar Asr, the time is short. But just always try and remember, this is something I tell myself. This is actually a gift. It is, not an, it is an obligation and it is a haq that Allah has over us. But more than anything else, Allah has given us a gift to be able to connect with Him. To be able to remove ourselves from all of the trappings of dunya, all the attachments, all the issues. Just let it all go behind us. Put it aside. You have your hands open. There's, you can't hold anything. There's nothing to gain. Just let everything go and be in that precinct, in the presence of Allah. Connecting, 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 connecting. I mean, we are, we, are, we are designed to connect. That's why the phones are so attractive. It's a way for us to connect. We love connecting with each other. The internet is a form of that also. But the true purpose of connection is to connect with that which is always there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always close to us. And what we do through prayer is remove all the distractions that move, re, take us away from that. So, prayer, salat, this form of connection, it has a particular formality that we go through. We first come, we remove through wudu, we purify ourselves, we remove the distractions and the obstructions we've had throughout the day. Maybe we've had things to worry about, things we're scared of you know, things that we're tempted by, whatever it is, we just do our wudu, we remove all of these distractions from our mind, from our body, from our hands, and then we enter that precinct, that presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and say, finally, I can talk to the one who created me, mm. the king, who we will all meet. They say that the ones who pray their prayer seriously with khushu, with, with, with reverence and with seriousness, they are the ones that are looking forward to return. Raji'un, not tarji'un, the ones that are going to be returned. Now you think for yourself, do you want to be one of those that is forced to return to Akhirah, where our, everybody is going destination, or do you want to be one of those joyfully want to return? And our way to do that to be joyful for that is to have that joy when we hear the azan, the joy when it occurs, the inner azan within us when we hear, oh, I need to pray. Not, oh, no, I need to pray. Oh, I get to pray. I get to pray. It's not easy. It's not always possible. But I just want you to think of this. Whenever it occurs to you that, subhanAllah, this is a gift. This is an opportunity for me. You know, they say about the prayer, that it is, I mean the Prophet has described it as the central pole. You know we have five pillars in Islam. And these pillars, think of them as in a tent. You have four on the edges and you have one that's central. The Salat is the central, the center, central pillar of Islam. Mm. It is the most important thing any of us are going to do today. Most likely, we never know. Allahu Alam. But it is definitely one of the most important things you will do today. And this Salat is such a beautiful thing, it interconnects all of these other ibadat that we do. It's like, a, it's like a union of all our different types of ibadat. While you're praying Salat, you are facing Qibla, you're connecting with that need for Hajj. Just like in Hajj, you do Ihram through the Wudu, and you're in a clean clothes, you're in a clean place. You're entering a precinct, you're facing yourself towards Kaaba, so you're connecting yourself with the pilgrimage. You, while you're praying, you don't eat, right? You're fasting. In that moment, it's ob obligatory for you to not eat. You are fasting in that moment. You are saying the shahada. You are even, in a, in a certain form, you are even doing a type of zakat, which is you're giving of the thing that is most valuable to any human being. Talk, talk to even a billionaire. They will tell you, they will spend millions to save half an hour of their time. And we all have been given time. So even give a few minutes of your time to purify the rest of your day. So just think how amazing this one action is that we do. And many of us here, we do it. We're, alhamdulillah, we have the habit of doing it. 
and to be grateful for that. Yes, we want it to be more beautiful, we want it to be more meaningful, but just the fact that we get to do it, let's be grateful for that. Let's be grateful that we realize, ah, time to pray, and let's be grateful even after that we got to pray. We say istighfar to, of course, we can always make our prayer, our salat better, but that we got to do it, that Allah gave us this gift. Every single time we pray is a gift. You know, it's amazing what they say with the Fatiha, that Surah Fatiha, it's an opening, right? And it's actually our means to speak directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the, in the center of the Fatiha, we say from first praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, speaking, describing, uh, uh, praising Him, we go towards actually communicating with Him. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ And it's a communication happens two ways. So you are speaking to Allah and Allah is speaking to you. Amazing. The one who created everything, the one who is in charge of everything, all the universe, entire universe, is like a ring within a desert of the next heaven. So imagine just the magnanimity of this creator, the one who gives us life, who sustains us, every breath goes in and out, of everything, every leaf that falls from the tree is by his hukum. You get to talk to him, he's going to talk to you. What a gift, subhanAllah. Again, I'm telling myself this as well, I forget this. I can pray my prayer and not be concentrated, of course. But just the fact that I get to pray and be grateful for it is a good step towards appreciating the Salat is a good way to improve the Salat. Just taking that moment out in the day and realizing this is for me. This will help my day. You know, they speak a lot about efficiency. Um, this is, uh, you know, even, even, even scientifically they speak about how to improve your efficiency, you know, in your work or anything. And they say, what do they say? That you should take a moment where you completely divorce yourself, detach yourself from what you are doing. And that's what we are called to do when the azan happens. As soon as it happens, think about, for example, uh, Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu, they used to say he used to be so engaged when playing with his kids, family or anything, but as soon as he hear the azan, he would let everything go. There was nothing else that mattered. And that stillness that you get, that ability to detach from everything and really rest in a silence will energize you, will help your mind, concentration, your body becomes more palpable. And especially one thing I want us all to remember here, and I'm saying this to myself especially, that the barakah that the rest of your day will get by actually taking out that time to pray your prayer properly. Like the Prophet said, the one who is mindful in his prayer, the rest he will be mindful in the rest of his day. Whoever is concentrated and focused in his prayer, he will be concentrated and focused in the rest of his affairs. Just remember that. So you're not taking anything away even by praying the prayer for a few minutes. You see, the next hour you spend in whatever you're doing, you will get it done in half an hour. Sure. I make a promise. It's not even my promise. Bismillah. We have a few minutes now for uh, sunnat, and then inshallah we will do the khutbah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.